Today is the first day of legal recreational weed in California. So this is a very, very big day. This year is from Business Insider. California's cannabis market is expected to soar to $5.1 billion, and it's going to be bigger than beer. Wow. Uh, so the market for legal weed in California is expected to hit $3.7 billion in 2018 alone. I mean, imagine that. An industry that springs up out of nowhere overnight. And then it's that popular, that successful, $3.7 billion in 2018 alone. Um, and they say that number is going to increase to $5 billion by 2019. So again, we're just talking a few years off in the future here. $5 billion industry springs up. Now, there's also a 15% tax um, on marijuana. But what's going to happen is that's going to be a huge revenue stream for the state government. Now, maybe there's going to be a small number of people who stay on the black market, but the black market is going to decrease dramatically because the overwhelming majority of people are going to go, I'll pay the 15% tax. I don't give a fuck. Because you'd rather go to a store, you know, that has uh, standards and professionalism than meet some dude in a back alley uh, next to a dumpster buying Arby's. So this is, there's so many upsides to it. And that's what's mind boggling about this issue is that, so you get a tremendous amount of tax revenue going into the state government in this case. You get uh, thousands of new jobs created. You get deficit reduction. You increase uh, freedom and liberty. But then also another thing that, you know, should be the case is as we keep moving towards legalizing this at a federal level, emptying out the prisons that uh, have people who were nonviolent drug offenders. I mean, listen, if I, was, if I was president, that's like a day one thing. I'm going to release all of the nonviolent drug offenders. Why? Because that they're not actually criminals, you know? Like, there are certain things... We all agree on certain things. If you see if somebody who murdered somebody, we all agree that's a criminal. There's no gray area. It's like, yeah, that's criminal. There we go, criminal. Somebody robs somebody, uh, rapes somebody. I mean, these are things that we all agree. There's something innate about it where you have a, a reaction where you're like, ugh, that, like, that's wrong. That's clearly wrong. But if somebody's fucking selling a small amount of weed or they were caught doing cocaine or something um, or, and they had a gram on them or whatever measurement they would have on them, that's, I look at that and go, yeah, that's what used to be called a Friday night to people. <laughs> like, that's not, I mean, try to think about it in a different context with a different um, substance. It's like catching somebody with Jack Daniels. We must lock this person up and throw away the key. Five years for you behind bars, sir. We'd go, that's nuts. I mean, that was the case at one point with Prohibition. Alcohol was illegal. But if you see somebody with... I mean, how many times have you seen walking into a fucking Christmas party or walking into a birthday, somebody's got a gift in one hand and like a bottle of Jack or something in the other hand? Should that person be locked up in a cage and lose their freedom as a result of that? No. Now, that's not saying that substance isn't dangerous. Of course it can be dangerous. Yes, alcohol. Some people have cirrhosis. Some people are alcoholics. All these problems with it. People die as a result of it. I'm sure it's thousands every year. But none of us look at that and go, that, uh, come on, you should be locked up in a cage and lose your freedom over that. Well, then why is that the case with other substances? Why is that the case with cocaine? Why is that the case with marijuana? Even if we talk about truly odious substances that can ruin lives, why shouldn't we look at that as a medical problem where somebody needs help? Punitive measures are not solving anything. All it is is ruining somebody's life and wasting taxpayer money. So I would empty the prisons of, of nonviolent drug offenders because they shouldn't be in there in, a first, in the first place. The real criminal in that scenario is the entire justice system, which is not interested in justice. They don't actually want to, they're not trying to bring about a better world. It's just punitive. It's just, we're going to slap you on the wrist and ruin your life because of this thing that we declared arbitrarily you shouldn't be doing. 
So that's, you know, that's a potential upside as we move more and more in the direction of legal marijuana across the country, is that uh, we, we're going to have to start rethinking our criminal justice system. And, I mean, you want to talk about, for example, racial justice. One of the biggest wins in the fight for racial justice in this country that we still have to fight to get there is this, the drug war. The drug war is overwhelmingly disproportionately used against minorities. And it, again, it's that's why some people call it the new Jim Crow, the drug war, because you overwhelmingly lock up people of color for not for doing nonviolent drug offenses. So you want to have a win on, in the racial justice front? Well, here you go. Legalize marijuana, uh, release the nonviolent drug offenders. So it's time to do it, man. And we just got to cross our fingers here and hope that Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump don't go too much in the wrong direction uh, on these issues. But... There you go, man. Big day in California. Big day for the country. Market springs up virtually overnight. That's going to be a multi-billion dollar market. I think I read, what was it? The entire marijuana, legal marijuana market in the U.S. by, I don't know if it's 10 years out, they said. We're going to have 300,000 jobs. 300,000 jobs tied to that industry. So this is a win from every angle. Economically, when it comes to the government and the revenue the government's getting, when it comes to freedom and liberty and justice. So um, today's a great day for this reason. And let's keep fighting on and try to get it legal at a federal level because 61% of Americans are already there.